welcome back to my channel today i want to teach you how to draft a basic bodies pattern so if you need your scissors your paper scissors your ruler your tape mail and your marker and you can use your pattern master if you have it but i don't have my pattern master here so i'm going to be using a ruler and my hand a free sketch hand so i have my measurements 38 bust waist 32 shoulder 16 my half length 17 and my nipple to nipple point will be 8 inches so i'm going to start off with this line half an inch at the upper part of my pattern paper this is just to ensure that i'm well guided when i'm drafting this serves as a guide line for me so i'm going to have a straight line at this point After this, I'm going to input my shoulder measurement divided by 2. My shoulder measurement is 16 inches divided by 2. That's 8 plus half an inch. That's 8 and a half. So, in allowance. So, then I'm going to come down by 1 inches for my shoulder slope. Then I'm going to make a straight line with these two points. And after doing this, I'm going to, this line, this particular line is going to serve as our new um, should, um, measurement placement. This is where we are going to be having our measurements now. So I'm going to mark out my arm hole depth. Your arm hole depth is your shoulder divided by two, except in rare cases where the person is busty, then you have to increase that. Then I'm going to serve uh, this particular line. This is my um hammer line. is going to serve as my chest line. And I'm just going to measure 8 inches at that point. Then I'm going to come to this place and then measure 9 inches. You can see this, that, that's where I started my 8 inches. And I'm going to come to my guided line. And I'm going to measure 9 inches. Simply because I have removed 1 inches from this place. So... The one inches we, we go back. And I'm going to make a straight line. This particular line is my chest line. So you can see then I'm going to measure my half length. My half length is 17 inches. I'm going to mark out 17 inches. Then I'll come to my guided line. This is my guiding line. Then I'm going to measure out 18 inches. Remember, I've removed 1 inches from my shoulder line. So I'm going to increase the line. Then I'll make a straight line. If you don't do this, you are not going to have a straight line. Ensure that you mark out the accurate measurements and start from your shoulder slope line when you are taking your vertical measurement. And I'm going to input my that my nipple to nipple measurement is eight inches divided by two. That's four inches. And I'm just going to extend the line. Then I'll mark half inch at both sides. This is how as my dart leg. And I'm going to measure out my dart length. Four inches. And I'm going to connect my dart legs with the dart main body the dart is not always straight it's always in a um, triangular form just blending this other side okay so that's my dart then i'll come to my chest line and measure out my first measurement which is 38 inches and I've divided into four. 
this is the only um this is only the front part so i divided my stamp paper into four so this is for the front and i will come to my waist line to measure out my measurement and i'm going to include my that measurement that i took out the one inches with my waist measurement help you get that i'm going to include the that inches that i took out that's the one inches half inch at one side and i'll add the one inches at my that and i'm going to come to my ham hole and measure half of my hammer which is eight inches divided by two that's four inches then come out by half an inch because this is the front part and we are the the front part is um bigger so for the ham hole to sit perfectly well you have you have to come out by one inches and i'm going to use my free hand to just connect the lines with my seam allowance then I will measure out my depth, my neck depth, my neck width. I'm using three and a half of both the depth and the width. I'm just going to connect. If I increase this neck depth and neck width, for an adult, you can make it for depending on the wideness. And I'm going to connect my solar slope to my neckline. I'm going to label the depth, the neck depth, the neck width, my shoulder slope, that's SL, my arm hole, my seam allowance, my chest line, my waist line, that's my length as well. So I'm just going to cut out. Just have to be careful when you are leveling and you have to be careful when you are cutting out well so that you don't have your paper messed up just like i do i'm going to cut out as well and trace out to your slow should have to make sure that your you foot sits perfectly well at the shoulder area. Put up to neck bed, the neck width, the neck line. So basically, if um, you are going to be sewing your darts, this is how to just attach your. This is how you are going to sew it. You are going to sew it. This way, the way it is. So for my back bodies, I'm going to measure the same thing that I did for the front. My guiding line, and I'll make a straight line. Going to then I'm going to measure out my um, what's it called? Shoulder, which is sixteen. Same process we did for the front bodies. One inch is for my shoulder slope. Then my arm hold depth, which is eight inches. Make a straight line. And my chest line. I'm going to measure out my half length as well. And I'll make a straight line. Remember how we did for the front? We started with add a shoulder slope for our measurement. So I marked out two inches for my back for the zip allowance. Normally, I used to have my zip allowance to be one inches, but then I'm going to mark out the zipper ball. The one that I used to make the zip 
to be um to pork out so i'm going to reduce it i'm going to reduce the porkness then I, yeah i'm i'm going to measure out my neck depth and my neck width for the back the neck width has to be the same thing but for the neck depth you can you can always increase or reduce it depending on your choice so now i'm going to connect my slope shoulder slope to my neckline And I'm going to mark as my hand pole. This is me using my free hand. I do not have my pattern for here, so I have to make use of my hand. I'll mark as my darts. Sorry, I'm going to mark out my sip as I told you the other time. I'm going to reduce it. Then I'm, I'm just going to measure out one inches at the lower part of the half length. Then I'll connect it to my chest line as you see me do. One inches. I'm just going to connect to my chest line. At this point, I'm going to mark out my normal zip allowance, which is one inches, like I said earlier. I'm just going to mark out. I'm going to start at the point where I measured one inches, and I'll mark one inches upward, up to my um, neckline. One inches up. One inches. Here. so i'm just going to connect these lines the back um the back piece the zip allowance at the back piece is normally um in a coffee shape it is not straight it is not always straight like you you are going to cough it a bit not very coffee but then you have to cough it a bit it's not straight like the front part Sorry, I just have to make use of my hand in this case. But then, if you have your um, pattern master, you can make use of the coffee side. Just curve it out a little bit, connect the lines. Then you are going to adjust your neckline. So from here, you are going to make, um, input your dart. After doing this, just like we did for the front, but then the dart leg for the front can is um is always longer. Yeah, let me say that it's always longer than the front. You can make it five inches, six inches, seven inches, depending on your choice, up to nine inches. Most times I use eight to seven inches, and I'm going to measure out my um sewing allowance. I'll include my dart measurement I've taken out. The neck line, the neck with a dead slope line, the ham hole, that's the labeling part of this. The, the labeling tends to give you the um, perfect um, description when you are trying to cut out or when you are trying to move a particular point after cutting out. So that you know when I make mistakes. I've seen people that this this like keep their was it for your physical allowance for shoulder depth. So to avoid such mistakes, you just have to label. Ensure that your fabric is folded when you are cutting, folded into two when you are cutting. I don't have my pattern paper for them because I'm just illustrating. This is just an illustration. Ensure that you have your fabric folded when you are cutting out. This is very um this is a very good pattern because you tend to make use of it every time you want to make. You don't have to start making another one. That's why I said you have to be very careful when you are doing it. It gives a perfect shape when it is rightly done, a perfect fit. So 
thank you so much for watching friendly subscribe and like and share